guys are in the future, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. What's it like? It's good. I've got a hoverboard. Um, Did they cure diabetes yet? <laughs> Do we what? Did they cure diabetes yet? Uh, not diabetes, no. Um, Fuck. We've got hoverboards, <laughs> and um, everyone has these helmets that they have to wear. See, they 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 put the they put the technology into the hoverboards and not the diabetes research. Yeah, so but, but I remember they had hoverboards a long time ago, and some kid fell off it, and that's why they don't make them anymore. Yeah, that happened, <laughs> that happened in my town actually. Really? Yeah, I heard it happened somewhere in California. Yeah, it happened to that kid that ate pop rocks and drank coke and exploded. <laughs> yeah, see that that was over here. The Mikey, the Mikey commercials. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> this, this, this was actually the kind of thing I was planning to ask you in my interview as well, so we're already getting a getting a good head start. <laughs> yeah, that's the usual questions: is like hoverboards, pop rocks, coke, and the kid that died. So, yeah. um, do you two just want to introduce yourselves and say who you are and what what your game is? Edmund McMillan, my game is the ladies, <laughs> and also the the Meat Boy game. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm Tommy Rapinus and. My game is um, not very good, oh. and I have and then I have Meat Boy, which is excellent. Yeah. Um. In fact, from the footage I've seen of, of Super Meat Boy so far, and obviously playing the Flash demo, uh, it was the Flash version. Sorry. Uh, it looks like there's there's quite a lot of jumping in this game. Um. Mm. What like, what made you decide to make a game that was all about jumping? A game about jumping. That's an awesome question. <laughs> Never been asked that before. Yeah. Um, why would we make a game about jumping? Because that's that's the first platformers. Yeah. For jumping exactly. games. Mm-hmm. That's the American way. No, and yeah, it's, it, it's the yeah. Uh, jumping was the like the first thing any character really did in any video game. So that that had to be what it was about because it's the game's kind of an homage to you know the the birth of platformers and mm-hmm. and kind of reinventing the platformer uh, formula so yeah of course it needed to have jumping because uh, you know it's so weird like I've never even thought about the fact that <laughs> no one fucking jumps to do anything <laughs> <laughs> you no know, I'm just walking along I gotta jump <laughs> I, don't know what, <laughs> I don't remember the last time I ever jumped was actually last time I jumped that I remember jumping was when we were jumping for the camera when we were at Kyle's. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that was the last time I jumped. Yeah, but <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't to get over something. No one jumped to get over something. Jumps anymore. Uh oh, there's a hole. <laughs> Gotta jump over it. <laughs> Here I go. When, so- and also. Whenever you jump, do you actually do like a front flip? Because a lot of times when people jump in video games, they can do like four or five front flips. Yeah. Well, I well, you don't do that. Well, I do. I was asking uh, Louis. Well, I I do a double jump. Um, I don't do a flip. <laughs> Every time I, I hop and then just jump again. That's weird. How do you do that? I don't. I don't see. I don't even understand how that works. How How do you go from Losing momentum, and you're falling <laughs> back down at this point, and then you jump again. That's so weird. I just press my jump button again, like in the midair. I tried to double jump after I played uh, Ghosts and Goblins. It's weird though when you double jump. Yeah, once you hit the jump button, you can't really control your it's the way you are in the air. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're locked into that, that. You know, right when you've committed that jump, you're going that way. There's no going <laughs> yeah. back. Yeah. That, uh, that's not how it is in Meat Boy, is it? If you in the air, you can you can like, obviously control your direction mid air. How does Meat Boy manage to do that? <laughs> he he has very small wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is like no one sees it, but if you look really close, there's actually like segments of his meat body that are like filleted, and they're <laughs> yeah. they're like kind of undulating in this weird flapping motion that actually like stops him. It's kind of like. On a, plane, like on, on, wings, on a plane's wings, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> when they turn up, when a, when a plane turns, you know the little little segments move, you know, flaps, so so like, flaps. The, the flaps. So yeah. that's basically what Meat Boy has, so he can kind of put on his air brakes, or you know, he has yeah. so much control in the air because he has those really detailed things. And it's, I animated all that stuff, but it's so tiny, you just don't notice. That's <laughs> the diehards will see it. Yeah, <laughs> the diehards. It's there. Um, 
so what, one of the things you've been pretty open about in the development is is like design elements of the game. You know, the, the like the difficulty and the risk reward stuff. What, how how come you decided to to talk about that before people played the game? I thought I thought it would be interesting. I it kind of frustrates me sometimes. I think a lot of I think a lot of designers, uh, especially good designers, uh, feel like they like to keep their secrets to themselves hmm. because then they don't want everybody to get a leg up on them. But my take on things is I desperately want people to get a leg up on me because I want more really awesome games. I want more people thinking about this stuff and and I think I think it's ideal to talk about your craft and talk about your ideas publicly so. You can inspire other people and um, and kind of boost people up to where you are. I think I, th- I think for a lot of people that didn't know much about that sort of stuff, that that really helped them and that kind of eliminated. Like I learned that stuff by playing and making games for years, mm. you know. And to uh, to be able to explain it in a clear way to a lot of people who have been starting out, I think that could help immensely and help you understand and get a leg up on game design. So I thought it would be a, f- a fun way to talk about the game. And also talk about, uh, you know, kind of, you know, teach, I guess, in, in a way. But really it was a response to, um, to I believe it was Adam Saltzman saying that there's not much to it. Aren't you guys just, just taking the Mario formula and just re- just doing that? Mm, and, yeah. I, and I realized when he said that, that if Adam Saltzman thinks that, then the majority of people probably do think that. So mm-hmm. we should probably talk about the lengths that we're going as far as how much we actually think about the design, you know, question question elements of design that exist in games, and uh, why they're there, what they're used for, and what makes a game fun. And uh, I just kind of wanted to talk a bit about that. So, I mean, I think at first glance, Meat Boy just looks like, hey, it's like Mario, hey, it's like N, and uh, it's just goofy. And um, I don't think people really think that there's a lot of a lot of thought that goes into the design, which there is, so... I thought it was a good way to kind of kill two birds with one stone. Okay. And uh, it's coming to Xbox Live Arcade, WiiWare, PC, and Mac. Um, a lot of bigger studios kind of struggle to do a good job of having multi-platform releases, so is, is, is that been quite hard? No. And I think it's easier because we are small and we have total control... Like, I have, like, nothing in the engine is third party. Like, there is no, there's no Unity, there's no Ogre 3D, there's no, I mean, the only thing that I use as third party is um, DirectX, OpenGL, and then the XDK stuff for Xbox and the Wii SDK stuff. So, like, everything is built from the ground up by me. So, and as I was building the engine, I built it with in mind that it was going to run on every platform that's out right now. So as I was designing it, I was I was designing it for everything. And you know, bigger I think bigger companies they often rely like they have their in-house programming teams and stuff and also, you know, that being said, they're the games that the bigger studios are putting out like the, the Final Fantasy 13s and the Grand Theft Autos and stuff. Those are huge huge engines that need tons and tons of people to mess with and and the engine I've written is it's small and it's easily manageable just by me because I know every aspect of it so I have I don't have to rely on support for PlayStation uh, from Unity or something I don't I don't have to rely on anybody else getting something done if something needs to be done I'm just able to step in do it and make sure it's right and then it's good. Excellent. And um, what are the differences with the, with the different versions? Um, is, there, is there any major differences? Resolution. Yeah, resolution's a big one. Uh, we, of course, ran into a lot of size issues on the Wii, so um, the biggest thing cut from the Wii version is music. Yeah. Um, we're trying to fit in as much as we can. We're going to... We're, we're, we're cutting it close, but... <laughs> I've compressed it to shit. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the main gameplay in all the versions, like the, the actual story and, and, the, and the main levels and everything, will essentially be identical. Um, the main game will, will be the same. We want it to be universal because we don't want people to feel you know, really cheated out of content that they feel like, like was essential to the game. Uh, stuff that will be exclusive for certain systems like Xbox or even like the PC possible editor and stuff like that will kind of be additions um, on top of 
Yeah, they are additions on top of the game, mainly because the platforms that those are on allow certain things. Like the Wii, like we were talking to them, and we were talking to Nintendo about level sharing and stuff, and they just weren't having it. And if they were going to have it, it was going to cost us a shitload of money and a shitload of time to actually implement it. And it's like, well, then we won't do it on that platform because it just it just can't be done, you know? Yeah, it's, and you'd be surprised at how much that, like, we're kind of not allowed to do, especially when it comes to user-made content stuff. It's yeah. hard to get by, and uh, especially as an indie, because unless you can pay, unless you can use your own servers, pay for those servers, and then pay a team of people to uh, go through everything submitted and approve it, make sure that it's not, like, doesn't have dicks and swastikas or... And that's, that's the other thing people don't realize is, like, you also have to have lawyers to take care of yeah. like, copyright. <laughs> and there's so much that goes people, on with that stuff. Yeah, people don't understand that, like, you know, yeah, okay, you can do level sharing in Little Big Planet. Little Big Planet's a little different than Super Meat Boy as far as team funding, team yeah. of lawyers, team of administrators, stuff like that. So uh, we tried, and I, I proposed a very nice system of automatic automation sort of stuff that would work and would require very little manpower or interaction from anybody, but it just it was not worth the time and money. I mean, it would have set the game back probably at least an additional year, which ah, is okay. stu- yeah. stupid for something that maybe a couple of people would have actually taken advantage of. Yeah, it's pretty like yeah. on the way, like any system. I mean, I know Little Big Planet got a ton of levels and stuff like that, but it was also touted as a level building game. Yeah. And that's what the game was. So and Meat Boy is not a level building game. Meat Boy is a, a jumping game. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'm probably gonna try and make an as fence, offensive level as I can just to try and cause your hassle. <laughs> Thank God. We hey. hope to we hope to eventually, after release on PC, eventually get some sort of editor support. Maybe okay. something really basic so people can play with. Who knows what'll happen down the road, but uh it's something that we have the ability to do only on PC because PC doesn't really. I mean, re, I mean, Steam actually doesn't even require ESRB, so I yeah. mean, have a lot of freedom on 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 PC. Yeah. And if we're putting it on our own site and we have our own shit up there, then it it's complete freedom. We can yeah. do whatever we want. But when you're playing on consoles, Xbox and we, you just can't do that stuff. Yeah, it's just it's not, not. It's not possible for a two man <laughs> team that want to get their game out as soon as possible, you know, it's just not, it's just not in the cards. Yeah, there were, I mean, we also, we were playing around with multiplayer as well, and uh, we found out really early on that, number one, it wasn't that fun. Number two is it would push us back six months to a year if we wanted to do it. Yeah. <laughs> six months to a year to do something that was, had already been proven not fun, and <laughs> where, where we could basically take that time and energy and put it into something that is fun. Which is essentially what we did. Like yeah. early early on, I, I, the people that have been following it, following Meat Boy, still have been posting and saying Meat Boy has over a hundred levels. But um, since then, since we basically kind of cut multiplayer um, and put more focus on, okay, let's make a really substantial, almost Mario uh, Mario World esque, you know, size wise experience that people can really enjoy. We put a lot more effort into. The uh, the amount of levels and there's over well over 300 levels and there's well over five chapters and there's shitloads of unlockables and and a lot of, of of substantial content that will keep you playing and and not just tacked on extra levels but actual chapters that have full new you know mechanics and little creatures and unlockable characters and full boxes yeah. and full cutscenes and everything else it's all it's all in there so we tried to add more of what. What made the game good? I mean, we, we basically applied the same thing that we've been talking about in design to the game. Where when we when we started out, we're like, oh shit, let's try to do co-op, let's try to do multiplayer, let's try to do all this. But when it came down to it, and those things just really weren't that fun. Yeah. Decided to focus on the things. Question what? Question our own actions and why are we doing this? Are we yeah. just trying to pander at this point? Are we just trying to, you know, polish this this thing up and just add as many extras as possible? And if we are, let's. Let's look at some games that do that and see if those are even worth it, which they aren't. I mean, yeah. Smash Brothers is an awesome game, but who the hell made levels with the level editor? Yeah. That, like, well, that, that, being said, that being said, who plays it online? Because the service is, service is, is horrible. I played it online twice, and it was so bad. Yeah. And that was that was the whole other thing. It's like, 
okay, if HAL Laboratories, which is funded by Nintendo, that has a huge staff and money and all this stuff, if they can't get multiplayer right, how can I? Mm. <laughs> how can how can me, me, this guy, this only guy coding all this, <laughs> how can I outdo Smash Brothers? Yeah. I can't. I definitely think it's, that's a decision a lot of developers should think about, not, and not making a multiplayer mode that is ne- not necessarily going to be that good when they could just focus on the single player. I, I definitely yeah. feel that about lots of games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How much um, feedback did he take from the Flash version, and, and you know what kind of changes has that made in, in how the games <laughs> ended up? Well, the biggest, I mean, I think the only feedback that we got from the Flash version that was that was constructive um, in in the negative aspect was that the controls were horrible, which is true. The controls of the prototype were really, 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 really awful, and that was that was mostly due to the fact that the game was made in about three weeks, and uh, the guy pro- programming it, uh, John, at, that was his first game and only game that he ever worked on, and uh, he just learned how to program in Flash, and it was just kind of something where he like made the editor, and we decided to make the game together, and we threw it together and put it up, and we didn't think much of it, and, and you know, people really liked the basic the basic premise. They liked the characters, they liked the uh, the formula that kind of went along with it, and they liked the, the weird content and theme, and so that's basically, we took what people liked, and we multiplied it by a million, and we took what people didn't like, and we completely improved upon it and, re- and reinvented it. So the controls are good so, now. The controls are very good now. Excellent. The controls. I'm. I'm going to go out on end here, Edmund. I'm yeah, gonna go say, ahead. I'm going to say that the controls in Super Meat Boy are among the best of any platformer. I would have to agree. I would have to say that the controls in Meat Boy will rival will rival any Mario game. Yeah. We spent. We probably spent about. I would say about two months on the controls, like back and forth, kind of, and then it was building a, the tools. So it was like, like the number one thing. It was like if we're gonna yeah. do this, it needs to play at least as good as Mario. Like it needs to control really well. You need to have you need to feel like you have complete control over it. I mean the uh, with most platformer games, the the basic illusion that you're trying to create for the player is that the player is now superhuman, right? Mm-hmm. It can't feel clumsy. It can't feel clumsy at all because it's not that doesn't feel cool. It doesn't feel cool to like glide across the level with, you know, one little tap and then you're in a wall, you know, like throw yourself across the level and you can't control yourself at all. And that doesn't feel like a superhero, you know, you want to have control. You want to be able to tap, tap, jump just a bit and then arc your body as you fall through, you know, a series of crazy saws and all this sort of stuff. And then actually feel like you're doing it. You're the one that's controlling it and you're the one that's doing it. And it's so important to, if you die in the game, it's, it's vital that the player realizes that they died because of a mistake that they made and not the game. That's mm. a huge, huge, huge thing because the moment you're like, oh, fuck, this game is fucking me over. You know, this game sucks. That's the moment that we lose. So, yeah, yeah the controls were, by far, that was the number one thing. And, and yeah. first thing that we addressed right away to make sure that we were on the right track, it was, let's, let's really make this perfect. And in a lot yeah. of ways, we copied a lot of the stuff that Mario did. The game feels like if Mario, it's like Mario, but speed times two and a half, probably. Yeah, but with the same exact sort of precision control. Yeah, mm-hmm. you have Mario. more control in the air with Meat Boy, though. Mm-hmm. You can, yeah. You, there's more control jumps, and you actually can weave, you know, like like a an S, like a. You can do really uh-huh. tight weaving in the air and stuff like that, and and of course he plays differently because. You know, your momentum carries you up walls. There's a lot of sliding involved, sliding up walls and wall jumping, and uh, precision wall jumping and wall landing. Would you say so, it's going to be a good game for people who who don't like letting go of the run button when they're playing Mario? Because yes, okay, no, yes. Not, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never, I never let go of the run button now. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, no. The later levels, later levels, when it gets really advanced, there are there are situations where letting go of the run button is is used. Uh, I don't believe in them. I don't believe in it. I never let go. Because you can't beat if you don't let go of the run button. <laughs> Bull. Bullshit. <laughs> no! I just... No, the, le- the which, level... Which level? Tell me which level I'll play it right now. Because it's, gonna, it's one of the secret ones. Just just say the number. Uh, oh, let's see. It would be B12. Okay. 
You know what I'm talking about? Oh. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, you have to, like, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's... You have you have to let go of the gas or you're going to get fucked. Yeah. But not for long. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. there's, um, there's one level on New Super Mario Brothers on the DS in The Last World where I, I remember spending one day just kind of speedrunning this level. And you do have to let go of uh, run to do it as fast as possible. Like, that's the fastest way to do it. You need to let go of run at a few places. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I mean, that's good. That's good game design. It's. I mean, it's utilizing what we're doing. It's. You have more control in the air, um, in certain in certain parts of of, of Meat Boy, if you let go of the run button and then press it again. Like it, it you have more air control because. It, it could, you, if you're holding the run button and you're and you're holding left or right, you're going to accelerate regardless of one, if you're on the ground or in the air. So if you jump, let go of the run button, you actually have more dodge control left, right as you're falling. Yeah. If you and then if you hit run, and then you'll zoom over to the side. So it's uh, there are some advanced controls there of, of letting it go, and I do find myself doing that. But of course, Tommy thinks he's just the best. He never <laughs> has to do anything. I am the best. <laughs> best main. Yeah. Now, as, as well as Meat Boy, there's, there's few, he's got a few friends to play with, hasn't he? He's got the characters from various other indie games. Yeah. Uh, how exactly did, did that come about? Um, in the original Meat Boy, we had cameos from Newgrounds characters, and um, and I believe there were a few other indie characters, but they weren't. They didn't play differently. It was just kind of like suits that you unlocked. I thought it'd be fun to do. Yeah. Um, uh, when we were redoing things and we were thinking, oh, what what should stay, what should go, and what should we play up, uh, we played around with the idea of doing a, like a full, almost Smash Brothers esque indie roster of unlockable characters that would kind of play differently. Uh, originally, I don't think they were going to play that differently, but Tommy was like, oh, we'll just make them play differently, and yeah, we'll we'll balance as we go. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and that's essentially what we did. I mean, we've just been adding them. You know, every 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 like month or so, we'll add a new character and uh, run around with them and and, and and check out how how he does things differently. And uh, the characters, the main uh, so the, there's at least five characters that you unlock in the main game uh, by finding warp zones. Those those are the characters that are universal to all systems. So those will be in all of the games, the ones that you find in levels. Yeah. Um, and that's that's uh, made in a way because I use the character's abilities in a... Uh, this is actually going to be something that I'm going to be talking about in another <laughs> post. In an exploration way, kind of a Metroid-esque uh, way, where there'll be certain places uh, where either warp zones or band-aids are that Meat Boy can't actually get yet. Uh-huh. Um, so as you're playing, you're seeing these things, and you're kind of remembering, hey, you know, you know this isn't... I can't jump to get there. Like, how the hell would I do that? And then later in the game, when you unlock a character that has the ability to double jump or to float, you know, or to stick to a wall, uh, you can kind of backtrack and find those areas and get into those areas that, that Me Boy couldn't. So there's there's a small aspect of exploration to the game uh, to give it a little bit more depth, and also um, you get to play around with the characters more. But the, the whole purpose of the indie thing was kind of to give back to the community. I mean, of course, the popular characters give to us, like uh, like Tim and Alien Hominid. People know who those characters are, and it comes back to us, but pretty much all the rest uh, will be relatively unknown to, I think, most mainstream gamers, and uh, it'll be a cool way to kind of, like, once somebody unlocks Fly Wrench, they'll be like, what the hell is a Fly Wrench? And they'll look it up online, and they'll get to play all mess offs, you know, weird games, and, and kind of see the whole, you know, the indie scene for what it is, and it's, it's a way to give back, I guess. I saw so, yeah, that just, um, Meat Boy's in Bit Trip Runner as well, isn't he? He has a little cameo there. Yeah, yeah, he's in the background. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Gaijin Games guys uh, actually live close to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they're in town. And, uh, I mean, I know all basically all the people whose characters that we've used, me and Tommy both know them personally. So mm-hmm. it's uh, we're a pretty tight-knit community at this point, and... Uh, so it wasn't hard to do, and everybody was pretty eager to do it. And I, I, I'm trying my best to include and uh, kind of shine the light on as many indies as I possibly can in hopes that not only people will find out who they are, but possibly publishers will also see them and their value and, and start talking to them. And I know that it's already happened because 
people, you know, publishers are already asking, hey, what character is this from and who made it? So in that way, I, I think it's pretty cool. I think it was a cool way to be like, hey, you know, we got a we got a one way ticket to selling out. Let's who's with me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think of offering one of those spots as a sponsorship deal with maybe some advertisers that could have uh, their own character in there? Yes, Peach <laughs> Snapple Iced Tea. Snapple, no. are you listening? <laughs> because no. I will sell out for you and only you. I want a fucking lifetime supply of, of Peach Snapple Iced Tea. <laughs> My wife is shaking do her head. anything for me. <laughs> <laughs> you can grit the diets, Peach Snapple. I don't want the caffeine. Here, I'll tell you. White Rock Seltzer Water. Oh, come on. It's so good. They have an it's orange like, flavor. It's like an elderly woman. Fuck <laughs> off. It's like, it's like six <laughs> And it tastes so good. So seltzer White water. Rock Seltzer, sparkling I drink, seltzer. I drink, I drink my seltzer water while I'm soaking my feet in Epsom salt. Oh, I'm Watch sorry. Shows. I, can't, I can't eat Skittles and drink Snapple. <laughs> yeah, you can. No, well, I have to. No, I can't. <laughs> It's painful if I do that. Yeah. Edmund, I, I saw that you were in the um, the WarioWare DIY Nintendo promo thing a while back. Uh, have you done anything else uh, with, with the game since? Oh, with WarioWare? Yeah. Yeah, me and Tommy did a couple of few things. Yeah. At this point, I'd be high-fiving Tommy. Yeah. So I, I've not played it yet. <laughs> how, how is it? Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's oh. awesome. It's, it's great. It's like... Um, it's like a Mario Paint for this generation. I mean, Mario Paint was huge for me when I was when I was little, and I made I made, basically made the same shit then that I did yeah. with this now. <laughs> but yeah, this is basically like Mario Paint, but you make games, so mm. it's super cool. No, I think it's I think it's great, and I hope it'll inspire a lot of you know young kids to be creative and, and realize that they can they can make games. Like there are programs out there that are almost as simple as WarioWare DIY to make your games and post them online and you can you can jump from that to basically what we're doing and uh, if you put the app in. So yeah, I think it's cool. It's a it's a great game. It's a it's I mean Nintendo uh, has made some bizarre decisions with some of their software um, and uh, directions that their games are going and they do make a lot of sequels and juice Juice them for everything they've got, but they also sometimes make really awesome decisions and come out with really awesome stuff. And I think the Wario series has always been really fresh. So yeah, I think they did a great job there. Yeah, I think they, they tend to be quite experimental with, with Wario, don't they? Yeah, it seems to be one of the only things that they were like, okay, let's innovate this. And they each time they seem to be, do a pretty damn good job. I don't know about one of the only things. That's a bit controversial. <laughs> What was that? I don't know if it's one of the only things that they innovate on. I think that, that would uh, that's a bit controversial. <laughs> well, I guess you could say that. I mean, I, I assume that all their latest stuff is considered innovation, innovative. But I guess I, I'm talking more like innovative in a way that I like. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> innovative that isn't Julianne Michaels fitness. Yeah, yeah. It, the Nintendo has been very innovative for my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, yeah, no, Nintendo's awesome. I, I, can I tell you about a dream I had last night? What? Okay, so I'm at, e, I'm at E3, and me and Reggie are hanging out, obviously. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Um, and he's like, oh, shit, I forgot my 3DS. I'm like, Reggie, what the fuck? So we make a DS, <laughs> but we give it, we, we, like, we take my DS, and we make, like, a wooden case for it that made it look different. And we showed it to everybody, and we won E3, me and Reggie. That's crazy. That's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. <laughs> That's actually what's currently happening right now. They're like, oh, shit, we don't actually have anything. <laughs> get, some, get some plywood and black spray paint. <laughs> I really wonder what the hell that thing's going to be like. I don't know. I've actually had several dreams about it. Huh. And well, you're going to find like... out before me, before everybody. Probably not. You're going to sleep in, huh? Um, I, I might not sleep in for that. Well, well, call me when you when you know. Or actually, no, no, don't call me because I'll just go online and read all about it. <laughs> <sighs> Can you just remind me when the game's out and uh, how much we're going to have to pay you for it? We don't know. 
Oh, have you not uh, said? It, <laughs> Sorry, I thought, yeah. I thought those details were out there already. I've, I've not researched that, I guess. <laughs> uh, no, no. Each copy of the game will cost $300,000. Yeah, it's an expensive one. This is this is just to protect our investment. <laughs> yeah. uh, we need to sell at least one copy. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this in business speak. You ready, Tom? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, Super Meat Boy is slated for a summer release, hmm. and it will uh, cost what games, what independent games of its caliber would cost. Yes. Yeah. I reckon. That sounds fair. It'll be less money than the game is actually worth. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you charge what it's worth, that that uh, that would be too high. You'd be an extra generous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I, I, I like to say that the game will be, the game will be cheap enough for everybody to buy, but just enough for some people to complain. Oh yeah, that's probably always well, to complain. <laughs> If the game was 99 cents, people would complain. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I, could, I could play it for free on Newgrounds and Congregate. I could play it for free. Why would I buy it? People complained about the, they go the in their... bundle as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I might have to pay a penny. <laughs> Why is there a minimum payment of a penny? I'm, t- I'm, I'm pirating it. <laughs> you know, people, yeah. people really did pirate that because they didn't want to pay a penny. Uh, we talked about that in, uh, in a previous podcast, and we were saying the figure of like twenty five percent won't be completely accurate because, like, I know I I, pay, I paid for it, but I used one of the downloads twice by accident, so that's going to maybe mask the figures a bit. But yeah, definitely some people did. Um, yeah. Which it doesn't surprise me, but it's it's a shame. Well, you want, you want me to tell you a secret? Sure. I don't care. <laughs> I don't really care about the piracy stuff at all. So. Well, if you, if you put some horrible DRM in there, you'd be able to stop the piracy. What are you talking about? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, that's, why don't people that's what we have. Yeah, Edmund, people... can I tell them about our, our DRM? What was that? I'm going to tell, yeah. tell them about the DRM I developed. Oh, man, if you tell them now, they're going to be able to crack it by the time we release. No, 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 this is uncrackable. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so what you do is you make it so... Uh, that anybody that pays for the game, um, it, it, they just can't, they can't play it. We put out <laughs> a game that, that just doesn't work. Yeah. And then that'll stop them from stealing it. <laughs> it, says, it says, go, it says, remember this? It says, go to page seven of the manual, fifth <laughs> word, fifth word on the fourth paragraph. Yeah. Remember that, Tommy? Yeah, that only worked before the internet. <laughs> That was awesome. That was like a fucking. It was a game in itself. You get yeah. your PC game home and you're like, okay, there's, okay, I gotta type this in. What what word is this? Okay, <laughs> page thirty seven of the manual, fifth line, fourth word. The word is cool. <laughs> All right, here I go. I, I remember I had Aladdin on the PC and it used that kind of thing, but I lost the manual. But I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what always happens. I, I remembered that one of the words because it only it, there's like ten different things that it asks you. I remembered that one of the words was apples. So if I ever wanted to play it, I'd have to boot the game and put in apples. And if it wasn't the right one, I'd just have to exit the game, boot it again, and wait until it randomly gave me the one that it was apples. And then I'd be able I to had, play the game. I had a game. I don't remember the game, but it was that exact same thing. I knew like two answers. <laughs> yeah. And I just had to keep rebooting. Yep. <laughs> yeah, isn't that great? You pay money for something and they fuck you over. <laughs> well, I think you have the right, right attitude towards that, though. Um, that's a good sign. We're, we're just not going to do video games anymore. Piracy is just too much. Yeah, I can't just give it. up. Yeah. You wouldn't. Okay. You wouldn't borrow your friend's underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you pirate a game? Yeah. <laughs> God. You're fucking dirty. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop some knowledge on on the listeners of this podcast. People that pirate a game are not going to buy the game anyway. <laughs> Think about that. Yeah. I thought about it. Uh, I, I reckon there's probably a tiny tiny overlap that that does exist, but it's yeah. You know what those tiny it. overlap are? The, the the tiny overlap are tiny people. <laughs> children, <laughs> children. <laughs> seriously, they're children or people who are fucking super poor, 
Like I guarantee that it's there's just it's it's so much takes such it takes more effort to pirate something at this point to to download it. That was the thing like with the with the humble bundle, you could get all those games. You could pirate them. It, yeah. it, it's it's very easy to get all of those games. But it was easier. They made it easier to just buy them off the site for almost nothing. Yeah. So what was the point? It's like all you have to do is make it easier to do, and once you've done that, you're fine. Um, yeah, of course, there's going to be a couple of retards that are going to fucking just seal it either way, but that they they do that in the stores. It's called shrinkage. Yeah. Every store expects X amount of things to get stolen from the store, and that's already deducted from yeah. the fuck. Total. They plan around it, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, and it's and that's the thing. Like, you know, piracy is still such a weird thing to talk about, even in the indie scene, and uh, but it's just one of those things where, like, I firmly believe that if World of Goo wasn't pirated as much as it was, it probably wouldn't have been as big as it was. Yeah. Because it was hugely pirated. It had like an 80% piracy rate, but the thing is, is it was also a huge, huge selling game. So it kind of went, it was like basically free advertising. If you've yeah. got a good game, and you've got a fucking good game, shitloads of people pirate it, they're going to still talk about that game. And they're not always going to say, hey, I stole that game, because it's still, it doesn't, you don't look like a cool dude if you just go around going, yeah, I got that braid game. I stole it. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't make you look cool, and it's not what you're gonna say either way. You're gonna say, "Hey, if you play that game braid, it's fucking awesome." Yeah, and that yeah. person's just gonna go out and buy it. Yeah. So it's like if the game's good, it's just a fucking ad, and uh, I think it either way, it's gonna it's be it's bad. it's really weird. Do you think the large companies like Ubisoft and stuff? Do you think they count every single pirated copy as a lost sale? Like, is that on their yeah. charts? Is it a this is a lost sale. They we lost this much money because of piracy. I'm because, sure they do. they've got a weird way of justifying everything. Because yeah. that's stupid. I have I'll tell you this. I've pirated several games, and every game that I've bought, I've purchased. <laughs> every every game that I have pirated, I have pirated. I have never bought a game that I have pirated. I have bought several games though. Well, yeah, it's just like like I know. Okay, what am I what am I looking forward to in the future? Like one PC game I'm looking forward to is Diablo, right? No yeah. way in fucking hell I'm gonna pirate that. Oh, That's gonna no. take so much fucking work. Yeah, like, I'm not gonna do that, and I'm not gonna risk fucking getting viruses from bullshit websites and everything mm-hmm. else, and having to worry about my computer getting fucked up by people when I can just go to the store and spend forty bucks. Yeah, forty bucks and you have it, and it's done. Like I'm like Starcraft is coming out. I'm not going to pirate StarCraft because there's no there's no point. Yeah. And it's like I already know it's a good game, and I already know that it's going to be worth the money that I pay for it. You know, there's there's no risk in me buying it. There's risk in me buying Assassin's Creed, which I didn't even pirate because I have no interest in it. Yeah. So <laughs> the only way I would play that game is if I pirated it, and I bet you a billion dollars I would not like it. Yeah. So. You know. I mean, well, specifically Ubisoft as well. The, the thing that that s- surprises me is they've not come out and said, "Oh, look, because of this DRM, this is how how well the PC version of Assassin's Creed 2 sold." They've they've not made any statement about the sales of it, which you'd expect them to do as as proof that their horrible DRM's working. You'd, you'd think that they'd they'd aren't want they to the guys that didn't they aren't they the um what, was it Assassin's Creed 2 with the one where people that bought it couldn't play it, but pirated people could? Yes. Was that the one? Yes. The, the big okay. <laughs> yeah, they they yeah. compromised the game design in the name of of DRM. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, so that's, it it kicks you out of the game if your connection to the Ubisoft servers <laughs> drops at all. It boots you out of the game. Yeah, it's it's all fucking <laughs> business logic. It's all business logic. It's it's not. It doesn't make sense. It makes and, sense and to it's, them. It's, in, in, in paper world, but in reality, I mean, I can't help but see it as if you make something awesome, regardless of if people are stealing it or not, if they're playing it and they're liking it, they're, they're, it's going to be a walking ad. And it's yeah. just going to be a big ad for your game. Um, I mean, there are, there are those people that don't buy anything. <laughs> Yeah. Those people are, are dicks. Those people aren't talking about anything either way. It's just yeah. Those people, expect. those people aren't going to. <laughs> they're not going to go. Oh well, I can't steal it. Obviously, I'm going to buy it. There's no criminal on earth that's like I'm going to steal that necklace. Oh, the security's too tight. <laughs> I mean, of oh. course, it's it's easy for us. It's easy for us to say this now that you know, uh, Meat Boy's not out and we're not seeing it actively pirated. But I've been through this before with Gish, and Gish had about an 80% piracy rate as well. 
And honestly, it never really bothered me that much in t- unless somebody actually would IM me or email me and tell me that they stole it. And that did happen. <laughs> it's just people. <laughs> that, it's just people. I, I had people actually tell me, "Hey, my uh, my version expired. Can I get a code for it?" <laughs> what do you t- just go to the website and, and and put in your information? You'll get a code back. Oh, uh, I didn't buy it. <laughs> All right. P.S. Your game sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's one of those things. But I also think that one of the reasons why it was one of those things where like Gish actually didn't sell that well. Uh, it sold, of course, good now uh, with the bundle and Steam and everything. But uh, back in the day, it didn't sell that well. The piracy rate was really high. But the thing was, is that game because I think because of the piracy, because of the awards, because of the press that we got from the game, uh, it 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 boosted the game and it also boosted me. I and mean, it's it it's it's one of those things where you put something out there and regardless of if people buy it or not. You know, I wasn't I wasn't starving. You know, people were stealing from me, and that sucked. But I wasn't starving. I don't think I was really losing money off of this deal, and yeah. it helped me in the long run. And I believe the same. I believe the same is happening with a lot of games that are good. Um, of course, if you make a shitty game, that's the thing. Is like this. This will kill you, though. Like honestly, <laughs> if you make a game that's shit, but the hype for it's huge, the first review that comes out and says. This game's not that good. I guarantee that game will be hugely pirated and people won't buy it. Yeah. Uh, so in that way, yeah, that sucks, um, and that will definitely hurt. But I, I, I'd like to believe that if a game's good, that people are going to buy it and people are going to talk about it, regardless of how much it's pirated. Yeah. Well, it's it's obviously true because the industry still exists. If yeah. <laughs> if everybody stole everything, no one would make any money and it would be pointless. That's true. Um, yeah. I think we're going to wrap up there. Thank you for your time, guys. Uh, really Double. looking forward to playing the game. Awesome. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs>